Welcome to CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. G. Marshall. Are you familiar with the phrase suspension of disbelief? I don't know who first coined it, but it means, of course, the willingness to accept an occurrence or a story that is not based in logic or demonstrated fact. Without it, there would be no children's fairy stories, no myths, no fantasies, no legends. Without it, naturally, this story could never have happened even though you're about to hear that it did. Sam, look out! That truck, turn the wheel, go off the road! What? What do you want to be, a ghost yourself? That truck, do as I say! Our mystery drama, The Forgetful Ghost was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Mandel Kramer. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly. There should be nothing sad about age, as long as the spirit is young and the flesh is strong. But when a wasting disease saps your energy, then, with the physical pain comes the extended agony of the spirit. The long look back down the bright tunnel of memory grows dimmer, and the shadowed figure looming up out of the darkness ahead becomes a welcome visitor. For the sick, not the well. For them, the agony does not end. Eve Gordon is dying. Tonight, tomorrow night, next week... The appointment is still not made. She lies in her bed beside Sam, her slumbering husband, her eyes closed, half dozing, begging for sleep. Then suddenly, she is wide awake with a startled cry. Oh! oh. What? Oh. Huh? Eve? Sam! Sam! What, what, what is it? Oh. Eve! Oh. E- Eve, are you all right? Shh, Wait, I'll get your medicine. Shh, shh, shh. I don't need that. What is it? Listen. But Eve. Listen. I don't hear anything. What should I hear? How can you hear? You don't listen. I sh- Nothing. You hear anything? No. Not now. Well, what did you think you heard? There's someone in the house. Well, if there was, he must have gone. No. No, he's still there, I tell you. How can you know? I just do. Oh, what's he here for? A robber? You want us to call the police? No, no, no. Oh, I, I, I think he must be gone by now. I, I don't hear him anymore. Look, how, how about you take another pill? Honey? I don't want any more pills. You got pain? No, no. It just I'm, I'm jumpy, like I, I can't sleep. How about a nice hot chocolate drink? Oh, well, it might be nice, but no, no. I, I don't want you going downstairs. Honey, the house is closed up tight. No one could get in. Just the same. Why take chances? He might be armed. Who? The man downstairs. I thought you said he was gone. Well, well, I don't hear him anymore. I'll but... tell you what. I'll get my hickory walking stick from the hall stand at the bottom of the stairs. That's as good a weapon as an Irish shillelagh. Okay? Yes. If you promise. <gasps> what is it, honey? Oh. Oh, nothing. Uh... Just, uh, no, nothing. You get me some chocolate. That'd be nice. All right. I'll be back as soon as the milk heats. Sam? Yes? Don't forget the walking stick. Just, just in case. I won't. So here I am, going down the stairs in my own house. And the last thing that's going to worry me is my wife thought she heard a prowler. What worries me is my wife, Eve. 
Nearly 40 years together. Wonderful years. And we both know it won't be long now before she's taken from me. According to the doctors, she's on borrowed time already. She's only holding on. It's just like Eve. She knows we have an anniversary next week. Oh. Oh, Lord, what will I do if I have to face it alone? stairs now, and suddenly I'm snapped out of all my inner thoughts. My senses are very alert. I'm aware that it's very quiet. Very quiet. That hour before dawn, I hear little noises. A whisper of wind outside. The house moving in its sleep. The sound of my own footsteps and my breathing. Did I make a noise? Or was it someone else? Could Eve have been right? Was there someone else in the house? I reach for my walking stick, jarring the other canes and umbrellas in the stand. I think I hear that sound again, like the scurrying of a mouse or a rat. Without turning on the light, I head for the kitchen, the stick raised over my head. And there, as I snap on the light, I see him. A strange little crumpled up man with a stark white face, a long, thin nose. No, please. Please, please, please don't hit me. What are you doing here? I, 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 I can explain, honest. Just, just please don't hit me. It wouldn't do any good, you know. It'd go right through me, you see. But it hurts just the same. What do you mean it would go right through you? Well, just, just, just what I said. There's, there's nothing to me, you see. Well, you, you don't look like much. That's a fact. Well, I, I never was. Come right down to it. Never weighed a pound over 135, even before I passed over. Passed over? That's right. Oh, oh! you didn't think I was real, did you? I mean, I mean, you take a good look, you can see right through me. I can. You mean... You're a ghost? I, uh... I guess that's about the size of it. Well, what are you doing here, haunting me? I don't even know you. Do I? No, I don't think so. Not to the best of my recollection. Then what are you doing here? Well, now, you see... That's a long story. I, I don't think we should go into that right now. I haven't time for any hard luck stories. I have enough problems of my own. Yeah, I know. I have to make some hot chocolate for my wife. She's sick. I... You know. How? I don't know. Just somehow I do. Oh. Well, just let me get the kettle on, and while I'm making the chocolate, we'll see if we can't get you straightened out. Now, you want, you want some aspirin for your headache? Oh, I don't know if I better. I don't know how it would work, me being a ghost and all. Now, this is crazy. I mean, it can't be happening. I can't be talking to you. Why not? Because you just aren't. I mean, there is no such thing as a ghost. Well, you don't believe the evidence of your own eyes? I'm afraid of what my eyes see. The doc must be right. I'm getting hypertension, high blood pressure. I'm seeing things. You're seeing me. I can't be seeing you. Ghosts are invisible. Oh, we are. I mean, I am, except to you. Then how can I see you? I, I don't know. You're, you're, you're different somehow. I wish I weren't. Sorry to be a nuisance. Look, I wish you'd just go away and leave me alone. Eh, the water's hot already. I have to make the chocolate now. Take it up to my wife. Well, where, where would I go? It's cold out and it's raining. Well, don't you have somebody of your own that you can go and haunt? Well, I... I... I have a daughter, Margot. Fine. Go haunt her. I, I can't. She's all the way up in Pawtucket. Pawtucket? Rhode Island. It's too far, and I, 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 I haven't any money. I'll be glad to lend you some. I'll give it to you if you'll just go away. No, pl pl please don't throw me out. What's the matter? You don't want to visit your daughter? I I don't think so. I'm I'm not welcome there anyway. And, hey, see, it's, it, it's, it's so dangerous. What do you mean, dangerous? Sam! Sam! Are, are you all right? Now we've disturbed my wife. Yes, Eve, I'm fine. Uh, but you've been so long gone. I, I, I started to What worry. are you doing out of bed? I've been laying there going out of my mind, and, and I, I thought I heard you talking to someone. But there's no one here. What do you mean? There's... Oh, Sam, darling. Oh, what have I done to you with this long illness? What have you done to me? You haven't done anything, oh, sweetheart. Oh, yes, I have. Oh, I've got you talking to yourself. You're on the edge of a nervous breakdown. I'm not any such thing. All right, now, 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 no, shh, baby. J just come up to bed. I was just going to bring you the chocolate. Bring it. A and a cup for you. You need it more than I do. But I haven't been talking to myself, Eve. What else? Who else is there here? Well, there's... 
Forget it, Mr. Gordon. She can't see me or hear me. There's what? What, Sam? Nothing. N nothing, honey. M m maybe we should get off to bed. Uh, you go first. And you get out of here, Prude, or whatever your name is. Uh, what, Sam? I said I'll bring the tray. Please, can't I stay at least till it stops raining? Oh, all right. I'll be down as soon as I can. Have some chocolate while you're waiting. I don't want my chocolate here. I, I want it upstairs. I'm bringing it there. You better go. I'll be back as soon as I can. No hurry. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> chocolate was good. Oh, I'm sleepy now. That's good, precious. You just lay back. You need your rest. So do you. Oh, don't worry about me. Oh, mm. it's been a long time, Sam. A wonderful time. A beautiful time. It's time for me to go. No. No, don't say that. A burden is all I am. And, and the strain is, is too much for you. Eve. Eve, you don't understand. I don't know how to explain it, but there was... There is someone down there who... Oh. All right, my darling. That's right. You sleep. How could I explain it anyway? How can I explain it to myself? There is or there isn't. Maybe Eve is right. I'm just crazy. Look, the thing to do is to get you back to your daughter. Oh, but I told you, I, I don't... Now, think I've I been do. doing some thinking. And here's what I figure. Now, tomorrow is Myrtle Day. It's what? Myrtle, my wife's sister. She comes one day every week to, you know, spell me with Eve. Makes Eve feel better. I should have a day off. So I'll drive you to Portucket. Oh, I hate to take you out of your way. Look, it's something to do. Usually I don't know how to fill my time. I just stay away to make, make Eve feel better, to please her. Now, look, you'll be able to travel by car. I mean, that's no problem. Oh, I used to get car sick. But maybe now I wouldn't anymore. Let's hope so. Tomorrow morning, as soon as Myrtle gets here, we leave for Portucket. <laughs> And mistreats her like that, why doesn't your daughter just walk out on him? With four children and a fifth on the way? What would she live on? What's her husband do for a living? Oh, he's a bartender. Uh, when he works. Hmm. What do they live on now? His father left him the house free and clear as long as he lives in it. If he doesn't, it goes to his sister. That's a rough situation. So how does she get out of it? No way. Without money... Couldn't you go and, and scare the daylights out of him? Oh, he'd never see me. He doesn't believe in ghosts. Well, can't you shake him up? I mean, as long as you're invisible, you could push him off the curb or trip him or shove him into an open manhole or something. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? I'm not allowed. I can only do what I'm told to. So what are we driving all the way to Pawtucket for? Oh, I have to do something while I'm waiting to get back. And, and, and I... I kind of want to help my daughter. Uh, you're some kind of a ghost, all right. You're not helped anyone. You're not even a ghost. You're a jinx. <laughs> Look out, Sam. A truck. Turn the wheel. Go off the road. What? What do you want to be? A ghost yourself? The truck. Do as I say. was that? What happened? Has our mild, ineffectual little ghost turned out to be some evil spirit who has lured poor Sam Gordon to a violent death? Or is he just a creature of Sam's disturbed, worried, haunted mind who has led Sam to seek a way out from the long horror of watching the wife he loves die by degrees? We'll know more when I return shortly with Act Two. In the car, along the grass, off the highway, a shaken Sam sits in the car he has finally braked to a stop. A hundred feet or so behind him, Jack knifed across two lanes of the road, in a shatter of broken glass and twisted guardrail, in exactly the spot where Sam would have been if he hadn't driven off the road, is a huge trailer truck 
which has burst into flames. What? What happened? The tractor truck that was coming toward us jumped the center guardrail. Oh, good Lord, if I'd have been there, it would have wiped me out. Just wasn't your time. No, you you, you saved my life. You were the one made me turn the wheel. Well, Hampton State Patrol, you need help, sir? No, 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 I'm all right, thanks to... You sure? Yes. Yes, no, no damage. You must have had ESP or something. I was after the truck driver for speeding when all of a sudden, just like that, he lost control. Man, you're lucky you followed your hunch. No, it wasn't a hunch. My friend here was the one who... What friend? I don't see anyone else in the car. You sure you're all right? Yes, yes. We've got another ambulance here. Maybe we'd better run you down to the hospital and check you out. No, no, no need. Uh, how, how's the driver? Cold turkey. We got him out before the fire, but I think he had a heart attack or something. Mm. Well, like once again, you sure lucked out. That rig would have hit you for sure and wiped you out total. Listen, uh, you sure you don't want to see a doc? No reason. You didn't get hit on the head or something? No. Why would you think that? I thought I heard you talking like to someone when I came up. Well, who would I talk to? You can see I'm all alone, can't you? That's what I mean. If you heard anything, it was just a prayer of thankfulness. Well, you can say that again. Okay, mister, if you're all right, I got plenty to do back there. Pruitt? I wish you'd call me Peter. How come you knew that truck was going to jump the guardrail? Oh, uh, the driver told me. The what? The driver. You see, he had a heart attack and died just before the accident, so he told me while he was passing over. Oh. Tell me, you, you still want to go on and see your daughter? Well, if you don't mind, I hate to be in trouble, but may we? Mm. How can I refuse anyone who just saved my life? Well, Peter? Uh, uh, what, Sam? We're going to just sit here, watch your daughter and the children playing in the backyard? Oh, what else? Well, don't you want to go and see them and talk to them? Ah, uh, what's the use? They couldn't see me. They wouldn't even know I was there. How do you know? Your wife, she couldn't. The cop, he couldn't. All the people who trample me when I'm in a crowd, they can. Nobody can. Except me. Except you. How come I can see you? I don't know, Sam. But what would I do without you? Thanks. Uh, see, the, the ki kid on the swing? That's Susan. She has freckles. <laughs> She's six. And the twins are Patrick and Michael. They're four now, I guess. And Melinda's the eight-year-old. <laughs> Little mother, look at her. <laughs> She's a lifesaver for Margot. And one more on the way. What are they going to call that one? A boy? I don't know. A girl, I guess. I guess it ought to be Deirdre of the Sorrows. They look like a happy little family to me, playing in the backyard. Sure, sure they are. When he's not there, he spoils everything for them. There, there, see, see, will you look at that? That's the villain of the piece, huh? Yeah, big son of a gun. Yeah, and he's as mean as he's big. Oh, look at that. He just smacked one of the twins for nothing. Can't you do anything to stop it? I told you, Sam, I'm not allowed. Well, couldn't you have before? Why do you think I'm where I am? You mean he... He murdered you? Uh, well, not exactly. Well, what do you mean? Uh, I tried to break up a fight one day and he knocked me half across the room. I fell and hit my head. I was out for nearly five minutes. And then I thought it was all right. Two weeks later, I had what they call a stroke. It wasn't... It was a blood clot from the time I fell. Didn't you go to the police? I'd passed over before I found out. Mm. With no way to get back at him? No. It's very frustrating being a ghost. Uh, it can get pretty frustrating just being alive, too, Peter. Uh, when I think of all the wonderful things I might have done for my poor wife, if... If, if what? Uh, nothing. It's only money. Money? Don't knock it. You can solve a lot of problems. And cause just as many. I ought to know. Me too. But how come you? I have a friend. Mo Beck. Friend. Every morning and evening on the train, commuting, we play a little gin game. Twice a week, Tuesdays and Friday evenings. A little friendly game. You know, 
When I was having trouble meeting Eve's hospital bills and all, I figured up over the years how much Mo took me for. Oh, how, how, how much? A dollar here, a dollar there, some big games, a $20 bill, later a hundred, maybe up to five. Altogether, like $10,000. But you believe it? The worst part of it is, I know he cheats. Ooh, you, you, you can still play? Well, what do you figure from a sucker? I figure sometime I either have to win or catch him at it. Who knows? Maybe tonight could be the night. Ten thousand dollars. It's a lot of money. Except who needs it? What could it buy for me? Oh, I was just thinking what it could buy for my Margot. But that skunk would just take it away from her. Oh, no, 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 no. She'd pull up stakes and, and grab the children and leave. And he would just follow her. Not him. Not if he didn't know about the money, first off. And second, he wouldn't dare. He'd lose the only real stake he's got, the house. You... Oh, oh, dear. What? They're going in the house. I hope he hasn't been drinking. Oh, if I could only do something about him, but I can't think what to save my life. It's a little late to think of that. But wait a minute. Maybe it isn't too late for your daughter. Huh? You just saved my life. Maybe I can do the same for her. How? Look, since Eve... Since she took real sick, I, I I haven't been traveling. But my day off today, I still play gin with Mo. <laughs> I'm still hoping to to catch him out. Oh, even if you're dead, what? What do you mean, what? Well, what good would it do? The money's gone. No, 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 no. He's good for it. You mean that he'd admit that he cheated? Mo? Never. Then how could he be good for it? Oh, no, you have to know Mo to understand. I mean, when you say gambler, that's just a word. Mo is a gambler gambler. He could cheat to win, kill to win, anything to win. But he loses, he pays up. Pays up and in cash. The way that man is made. And if he ever paid up to me, that would be a lot of dough, wouldn't it? Well, so is winning a lottery, but who wins? The surest way is to cheat. You know how? Up until you came along, no. Now. I do. You sure you understand now? Well, I guess. I, I, I never was much of a card player. Look, gin is the simplest game in the world. You have to have at least three of a kind, like, say, three aces or three fours, let's say, or else a run of at least three in a suit. Now, you have ten cards in your hands, all right? Any combination of runs and numbers that adds up to ten cards, that gives you gin. Oh. But, but what about if you just have nine cards and, and one left over? All right. If it's a low card, you go for a laydown. Understand? I mean, you're betting it's lower than the count he has in his hand. Oh, just like rummy. It is rummy. Only if you can get all ten cards first for a laydown and gin... Then you score big. So that's why it's called gin rummy. That's right. Now, look, you understand what you'll have to do. Well, sure, he can't see me, so I'll tell you what he's got, what he's looking for. I'll maybe cut the cards an extra time and figure out just how he's cheating it. That's the idea. I just hope I can swing it. See, we were never allowed to play cards in my house when I was growing up, so I'm kind of an amateur. Peter... You're kind of an amateur about everything. You know that? Come on, Peter, cheer up. We're going to get your daughter out of it. Uh, it isn't that, Sam. What is it now? I just remembered something. Now what? Sam? That you? Yes, Myrtle. Anything wrong? No, everything's under control. Eve, is she all right? Nothing to worry about. The doctor's with her. I... I thought you... Uh, I heard you talking to someone. Didn't I hear voices down here? No. No, I'm all alone. Oh, no, isn't that funny? I could swear I heard... That's what I was doing. What? Swearing. I, I tripped. Coming in the door. Oh. But never mind that. What happened to Eve? Oh. It was one of the bad days, Sam. The, the pain. I, I sent for Dr. Maitland. Well, she, she's not... No, no, no. Everything's under control. 
but she was asking for you. All right, be a good girl. Tell her I'll be right up. Oh, sure, but well, what are you going to do? I thought maybe, uh, maybe she might want some hot chocolate. She likes that. I'll get that for her. What she needs from you is you. If it's me you're worried about, Sam, don't. I, I, I wouldn't get in anybody's way. You better not. Just don't go around scaring anyone like last night. Oh, I won't. I'll make myself invisible. Hey, now, you, you, you better get on up to your wife. One thing first. What, uh... What was it you thought you remembered? Huh? Oh, oh, that. Uh, just, uh, just why I came here. I mean, why I was sent over. Why? Well, Sam, I, I don't like to tell you. That I, like... Uh, under the circumstances. It wasn't to, uh, to fetch someone back? Well, uh, s something like that. Oh, no, not Eve, please. Not my wife. What was it, Eve? I don't know, Sam. Honest. That's all part of what I don't remember. <laughs> The terrible thought has swept over Sam suddenly that the poor lost spirit he has befriended may be a dread messenger come to take his wife from him. Peter no longer is an object of pity, but has reassumed his own presence, a figure of haunting terror, the terror of the real unknown. I shall return shortly with Act Three. and heavy heart, Sam climbs the stairs to his wife's bedroom. But an unexpectedly reassuring report from the doctor and his wife's apparent health have banished any unhappy thoughts from his mind. Temporarily, at any rate. And now he sits by her bed, her hand in his hand, as all true lovers do. With anxious eyes, he traces the face wasted by pain. Her eyes unnaturally bright, but still lit with love, never leave his face, as if memorizing every feature before they dim and fade away. Don't, don't look so, so worried, Sam. I'm not, I'm not, darling, not now. Dr. Maitland said I was all right, didn't he? He said you were stronger than ever. You know why? Why? Because I have to live ten more days. It's our anniversary, remember? Mm, the 40th. You don't think I wouldn't be there with you for that? Of course you will. You know what it is, Sam? The 40th? Yes. I've already bought your present. I'll bet I can guess what it is. You want me to give it to you now? Indeed, I do not. Before the anniversary, that's bad luck. I'll wait till the day. And don't you worry, I'll be there. We'll both be there. Oh, I'll bet I can guess what my present is. You know, the 40th is rubies. Yes, I know. A ruby ring. Oh, <laughs> I always wanted a ruby ring. <laughs> I'll bet you can't guess what mine is for you, Sam. I bet I can't either. But do you want me... Eve? Eve? Mm. Oh, thank God, I thought... Now, you're all right. You're all right still. Hmm. My present. I wonder if you'll be here to give it to me. I wonder if I'll ever find out. Peter. Psst. Peter. Here I am, Sam, right here. Uh, how's your wife? She's asleep. The doctor gave her something so she could sleep. You want me to make myself scarce? Uh, I wish you could just disappear. I could leave? No, I need you. For what? Oh, oh, the game. Mm -hmm. I'd forgotten about that. Or well, then what? Have you remembered? You, you didn't come for Eve, did you? I don't know, Sam. I hope not, but... I don't know. You couldn't take her away from me. If I was told to, I'd have to. Oh, a fine friend I've turned out to be after all you were planning to do for me. I better leave. Oh, 
Maybe, maybe that's someone coming after me. I doubt it. Anyone you know wouldn't stop to ring doorbells. Must be Mo here for the game. You gonna call it off now? No. If between us we can't do anything else, at least we can be of some use to your daughter. <laughs> he thinks he's the wolf at my door. He doesn't know he's gonna be our little pigeon. Let's go let him in. Well, what are we playing for, Sam? The usual? I feel lucky tonight, Mo. You want to raise the ante? Sure. What'll it be? A tenth, quarter of a cent, what? How about a center point? Triples? Sure. You, oh, you really want to take a bat, huh? <laughs> okay, you got a deal. Pick up your cards and play. Okay. Ah, queen of spades, doubles. Look, I don't want the lady. Do you? Oh, I might give her a whirl. He's got three queens, two kings, two fours, a nine, ten, and a jack, and he dealt off the bottom. That figures. What'd you say? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Now, you going to discard? Sure. Uh, how's the nine of spades grab you? He, he wants you to take it so you'll discard the mm -hmm. more. Hmm. No, that's not my speed. Let's see the down card. Yeah, I can use it. I'll, uh, I'll give you the nine of diamonds. Can I hit you where you live? No, uh, no, I'm going fishing. You have a run in hearts using the four. If you could only fill in with the seven. Shh. You... He didn't say anything yet. Goes with the cards tonight. They're gonna turn on me. What's your discard? That lousy seven spot I drew. Sure, hope it isn't any use to you. Oh, I might just take that. Lucky seven hearts. Jim. Oh, oh, you caught me where I live. For a bundle. Let's see. Three ladies is all I lay. Two fours is eight. Two kings makes 28. Two tens and a jack is 58. Plus gin, 25, is 83 in three boxes. Double. Spades, right? Right. 166 in three boxes. <laughs> I'm lucky it only goes on one game. What's the matter? You want for blood tonight? Look, I got to win sometime, don't I? Yeah, looks like tonight might be the night. I'll go with four. You're murdering me. What do you got, ESP or something? That's another 62 points put you out on all three games. A Schneider. A whitewash? How does it feel for a change, uh, The evening's young. The evening's young. You're only into me for a couple of hundred. The luck will change. Your deal. Gee, I don't understand. He's still cheating. With your help, he's not getting away with it. What are you, mumbling to yourself? Just tasting the fruits of victory. Well, enjoy him while you can, friend. He can't keep up this way. I'm betting it can. Want to put your money where your mouth is? Why not? Raise the stakes? Sure, name your poison. Five cents a point. You got it. Fine. Now you don't stand a ghost of a chance. That's what you think, brother. Chin. Again? The name of the game. Well, I don't see how it's possible. That rounds off another board. You know you're 5,200 odd ahead. I still haven't caught up to what you're into me for for the last 10 years, Mo. Well, you're not out of the woods yet. Uh, but I gotta hit the John a moment. Hold everything. I'll be right back. Pete, you're great. It's working like a charm. Yeah, it seems to be. But look, look, I, I haven't done anything. What do you mean? You saw he really was cheating, just like I suspected? Now we've been able to cheat him back. We haven't, Sam. I mean, sure, I could see what he was doing, dealing off the bottom, giving himself sometimes as many as 14 cards on the deal, faking them together so you couldn't see that, laying off two or three at a time, picking up the same way. But I haven't been able to do anything about what it. What do you mean? I've been winning, haven't I? Yeah, but not with my help. What? You mean it's all been sheer luck? It has to be. Oh, good Lord. All that money. You know what's the luckiest thing? That I didn't know. I'd have passed out if I'd known. You better quit while you're ahead. It's only 5000 Only? Like I said, over the years, I've lost twice as much. I wanted to get it all back for your daughter. Sam, it's making me too nervous. 5000 will be more than enough for it. Just let's settle for that. All right, if you're sure. Watch it. Watch. He's coming back. Okay, let's get on with it. It's my deal. Hey, Mo. Mo, isn't that enough for tonight? With you into me for all that dough, you got to give me a chance to get even. Mo, I'm really tired. Okay, okay. 
I tell you what we'll do. One hand, double a quits. Now, you can't turn me down on that. Look, Mo. What are you going to do? Well, Sean, an old friend? Come on, Sam. What are you going to throw? I, uh, I'm not sure. Here. No, that would give him shit. That's the best you can do. Ah, I go fishing again. Yeah. How's a uh, lucky seven? Hits me right in the middle. That's gin. Yeah. Makes you 10,000 richer. I, 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 I can't take it. The, the, the card I just threw. Let me, let me see your No. Let me see. Mo. Mo, that was your gin card. Okay. So we're even. No, sir. Mo, listen to me. Sam. Sam, uh, I had a little brush with the dark angel the other day. A little heart attack. No, 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 listen to me. It was nothing. I'm okay. But it was enough to make me start doing a little adding up. I play cards, for example, and I like to win. But too much. So I cheat. For ten years I've been taking you. Now, I'm a methodical man... And they keep records. Guess how much I've built you out of. Now about ten thousand dollars. Give or take. It's what I owe you. Tonight I'm paying you back here. What is it? Certified cash check. For once I cheated the right way for the other guy. You got enough sorrow in your life as it is. May this help ease it a little. No, I don't need money. I know, I know. But what else do I have to offer? So, the check is off and mailed to your daughter. Her future is settled. Gee, Sam. I don't know how to thank you. Doesn't matter. It was found money for me. I don't need it. Now, what do we do about you? Oh, I wish I could just disappear. Mm, so do I. You're the only ghost I ever heard about who can't. Well, I could just walk out the door. What, and be trampled to death? Well, the streets are pretty clear this time of night. Ah, there has to be a better way. Look, isn't there any way you could uh, get in touch with your superiors? Find your way back to uh, wherever you came from? I can't seem to think of one. What, in this day of communications? It seems incredible. Ah, wait a minute. What? How about the telephone? The phone? Who would I call? You know how it is today. You want to make a complaint stick, you have to go straight to the top man. Oh, Sam. He wouldn't be in a telephone book. How do you know? That's what everyone keeps saying. Just because they don't look it up, they luck out. Come on. Let's take a chance. But, 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 but how, how would he be listed? Hmm. Under G, I guess. Gee. It, it'd be a pretty expensive long-distance call. If and I'm... worth it. But, I mean, I need to put you to the expense of... Don't me. worry about that. We're on nighttime rates. Ah, here it is. Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, right between Gockton and Gorda. Now, the number is 800... That's the man himself? Yes. Oh, but what would it cost him? It costs nothing. It's an 800 number. It's toll-free. Why don't you go ahead and dial? There's no answer yet. I could... Oh. <clears throat> Is this the number I was trying to read? Oh. Oh, yes, sir. I guess it was the number. I, 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 this, this is Peter Pruitt. I, I don't know if you ever... Uh, uh, yes, sir. I know. Even the least of us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh. Well, you see... Uh, sir, I, I got this crack in the head and I forgot why we... Oh. Oh, oh yes, sir. I, I see. Uh, I, I'm sorry I wasn't quite with it, but... Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh. I have to? Oh. Oh. Oh, but then, then that's all right. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I'm... I'm real glad. Well? Well, Sam, 
I know everything now. You came to take my wife away from me. No. I came to take you away from her. What? Oh, that's crazy. I'm healthy. I'm not ready to die. Whoever is. You can't take me away. I got no choice. You don't even know how to get back there. Now I do. And you're going back with me. It's... It's why I was sent. But I can't leave Eve. You can't do that to us. She's been waiting for our anniversary. She's been fighting, holding on just to be there. Sam, what can I say? You're already 24 hours late. But I'm healthy. I'm well. Sometimes we are taken in the fullness of health. Who's to question God? I do. I do. I'm not ready to go without Eve. Sam isn't in better this way. You'll be waiting to greet her. To greet her? When she comes to join you. For your anniversary? I can count on that? Sam, I haven't been very effective up to now, but this one thing I can promise you. Then maybe I... I guess I haven't any choice. And so maybe I... Maybe I... That's the only difficult part, Sam. Now, we're all going home. Suspension of belief. To accept this story, of course, that is necessary. None of us really believes in ghosts, or do we? In that moment, when the end of life comes, where are we headed? Where do we go? It'd be nice to think we had a guide, a friendly hand, even a left-handed one like Peter Pruitt, and to believe at the end of it all that we go to a welcome land. I'll be back shortly. Hello, I'm Rick Barry of the Golden State Warriors. As a professional basketball player, I know that good defense makes a winner. Cancer chemotherapy is one of the most important kinds of defense I can think of. It helps arrest and control cancer, a ravaging disease that afflicts one-third of our adult population. Chemotherapy treatment, which means the medicinal use of chemical agents, can control some of the most common forms of cancer. Proper and timely use of this treatment can result in patients leading extended and productive lives. But scientists have only begun to tap the pool of therapeutic drugs at their disposal. To continue this costly process, your support is needed. Send a check today to Chemotherapy, Box 8, New York 10028. Remember, the best offense against cancer is a good defense, like chemotherapy. Rick Barry is right. Chemotherapy can release suffering from cancer while it checks the growth of the runaway cancer cells. Your donation will continue this relief. Think about it. Then send a check to Chemotherapy, Box 8, New York 10028. better way to end tonight's story than with a quote from Shakespeare. Our revels now are ended. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Can we wish more to Sam and Eve and Peter Pruitt, that forgetful ghost who at last remembered the way home? Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Martha Greenhouse, Ian Martin, and Jackson Beck. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Who are you? Where are you? You are looking at me. I am on your desk. What? I am the Rani. The Rani of Rajputana. A statue? That little statuette? That little copper thing? It's talking to me. It can't be. Why can it not be? Because... He prayed. I heard. I... I... But now you must put away the revolver. Carefully. No... It is not my imagination. I am the Rani. The Rani? The queen of 
the thieves. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Enjoy this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search bar. Until then, thanks for listening.